Welcome to the Celebration of Leaders. Here to introduce the class of 2021 is Chuck Hookham, Chair of the Society Awards Committee. Good afternoon, this is Chuck Hookham. Among other duties, the Society Awards Committee is charged by ASC leadership with reviewing nominations for distinguished members. In fact, the highest honor available to civil engineers. The committee reviews candidates for their achievements and their career-long contributions to civil engineering and general public and makes recommendations, therefore. The committee is indebted to nominators for presenting so many great nominations, from practitioners and regulators to researchers and academics. There is a common misconception that this honor is only for academics. Our committee focused on ensuring equal attention to contributions from across all nominations from our practitioner brethren and others who also make significant contributions. In fact, two of our very noteworthy practitioner distinguished members will also provide their thoughts. This year we had many viable nominations and selection was not easy. However, on behalf of our committee, I would like to congratulate our new class of very deserving distinguished members. Thank you. Thank you, Chuck. As president, it is my pleasure to formally induct this year's class of distinguished members. The honor, which began in 1853, is rich with the names of extraordinary civil engineers. Among the early honorees are engineers such as John Abert, who in 1853 as head of the Corps of Topographical Engineers, organized the mapping of the American West, and John Stevens, who in 1905 was appointed chief engineer of the Panama Canal project by President Theodore Roosevelt. Today, there are fewer than 200 civil engineers alive who bear this title. I am humbled by the many civil engineering accomplishments made possible by the people we honor here. They have pushed our profession ahead and in doing so have achieved acknowledged eminence in their specialties. Before inducting members of the class of 2021, I want to express my appreciation to those who have nominated candidates and to the Society Awards Committee which recommends candidates for election by the board of direction. We would not be here today were it not for your considerable efforts to bring to light the accomplishments of these nominees. So on behalf of the board of direction, thank you. And now let us begin. Hi, this is Dr. Rao Surampali. I'll be introducing Dr. Lilia Braun, the new distinguished member. Here are some very interesting insights into our early life. Lilia used to visit her grandmother during summer months. Her grandmother used to do cotton farming. Lilia used to get up early in the morning, go to the farm along with the other workers. But Lilia got paid only a dime a day. Lilia asked her granny how come she get only paid dime. Our granny told her, all the time you are only talking, not doing work. I hope when you grow up, you get a job that requires thinking and talking. Lilia took our granny's advice 
and became environmental engineer. And now she is using those values and principles to protect and improve the environment throughout the world, particularly in South Africa, where she has demonstrated the use of the sustainability principles. Okay. Thank you. A woman of many firsts. The first African-American woman in the nation to earn a PhD in chemical engineering and the first African-American to start a consulting firm geared to environmental issues. Dr. Lilia Abram is a bona fide history maker. Well ahead of its time, the award-winning firm she founded, Peer Consultants, has grown to an annual average revenue of over $15 million and grown from three to 100 employees. It is synonymous with Dr. Abron's approach to putting sustainability to practice in helping elevate the impoverished globally. Having expanded to offices in South Africa and offering innovative design, build, sustainable development solutions, Peer Consultants remains at the forefront of transformative issues in water and wastewater engineering and environmental engineering, sciences, and sustainability. A firm believer in educating the next generation and stewarding the community, Dr. Abram serves on the advisory boards of many leading institutions and as president of the American Academy of Environmental Engineers and Scientists. The American Society of Civil Engineers is proud to bestow upon Lilia Abram a distinguished membership. In 1975, I was treasurer of the National Capital Section of the American Society of Civil Engineers. In 2021, I am being bestowed its highest honor, that of distinguished member. Thank you, ASCE. Today, we are faced with environmental challenges, municipal infrastructure beyond repair, climate change resulting in too much water, not enough water, fires, eroding coasts, and consequential public health issues. I am thankful for civil and environmental engineers, safe water, and that hazardous wastes are being handled properly. I am also thankful for public transportation. I will continue to do my part to protect our environment and to help deliver a cleaner and healthier planet to future generations. Thank you, Dr. Sarampali, and all who supported me in this endeavor. I graciously accept this honor. I'm pleased to introduce Dr. Greg Becker as a distinguished member. Greg has had a remarkable career as an academic, as you'll hear. What I would like to talk about is immense service to the profession and to the nation as an expert on geotechnical engineering and risk analysis. I first became aware of Greg's work when he served on the U.S. Army Task Force examining the causes of the failure of the hurricane protection system for New Orleans. Later, the state of Louisiana set up the Coastal Master Plan to devise solutions to their long-term coastal erosion and wetlands loss. Greg was appointed to a science and engineering board to provide advice on this plan where we met. Later, this led us to another advisory board with the Water Institute of the Gulf, which was tasked with the second iteration of the Coastal Master Plan. Greg's expertise and his willingness to provide service to the profession has led to his appointment to 16 committees of the National Academy of Engineering providing advice to the government on a wide range of topics. This has been an extraordinarily important pro bono donation of time and expertise on his part. 
Greg, congratulations on your well-deserved distinguished membership. In the battle of civil infrastructure versus the ravages of nature, we can look to the work of Dr. Gregory Becker, someone routinely consulted by government agencies and private corporations for large-scale systems risk assessments and management. His long career has seen the development of new and innovative ways to analyze risk and to deploy risk management roles, especially for the safety of dams and reservoirs of large dam owners, the Panama Canal Authority, the Corps of Engineers, and state water agencies. He has also contributed to U.S. public policy development through the National Research Council and scientific advisory boards of many federal agencies. The Glenn L. Martin Institute Professor of Engineering at the University of Maryland, he co-authored the seminal textbook on reliability and statistics in geotechnical engineering and two major joint industry studies on risk and the operational safety of hydropower dams. Dr. Becker has been recognized with the Geo Institute Terzaghi Lecture, membership in the National Academy of Engineering, and the U.S. Army Corps of Engineers Commander's Award for Public Service. The American Society of Civil Engineers is proud to bestow upon Gregory Becker a distinguished membership. Thank you, uh, uh, Tony. I am honored to be named a distinguished member, and I thank ASCE and its awards committee for this honor. Uh, whatever one's successes, they are nurtured by many colleagues and family, and I'm indebted to their support. One in hopes and intends that this debt should be paid forward. And with that, I gratefully accept this honor. <clears throat> Roberto Ballerini, I call him Dr. Mechanics because of his profound knowledge of solid mechanics and just as importantly, his extensive knowledge of advanced mathematics, which allow him to translate that knowledge of mechanics into useful people serving ideas. For the last three decades, Roberto has become an icon for civil engineering professors and researchers around the world because of the astounding range of his studies, a range not only in size of structures, but also the materials of which they're composed. He has done landmark studies on large steel and concrete structures and submicron and micron size biological structures and electronic structures. This has been an inspiration for civil engineering mechanics studiers around the world. His projects have been of such general interest that I dare say he's probably the only civil engineering professor ever to have published in both of the two most revered journals on earth, science and nature. But it's not in Roberto's nature to brag about any of this. In fact, if you were to sit down and have a conversation with Roberto, he's much more likely to engage you in discussions about what I can call our common ancestral country, Italy. He'd want to talk to you about the most fantastic artistic creation ever come out of Italy. And I don't mean the Mona Lisa. I'm talking about gelato. Yes, Roberto is an expert on gelato, where it's made, how it's made. And he would love to talk to you about all the tiny little villages and towns throughout Italy that both he and I have visited to sample the gelato. In fact, I'd be willing to bet that somewhere down the line, Dr. Mechanics, is gonna write a paper with a title something like this. 
the nonlinear interaction of taste, color, and texture of genuine Italian gelato under various environmental influences. And at that point, people will recognize him not only as Dr. Mechanics, but Roberto as Dr. Gelato. Roberto, congratulations on becoming a distinguished member of ASCE. While nature has had millennia to perfect its structures, humans are a bit more time constrained. Enter Dr. Roberto Ballerini, a pioneering researcher of solid structural mechanics and structural engineering, specifically the mechanics of fracture at multiple scales. Seminal research he did on steel to concrete anchorage helped inform ACI and Ryland codes through fracture mechanics-based design formulas that also influenced ACI's recent adaptation of size effects in shear. Taking his own cue from nature, Dr. Ballerini reverse-engineered the mollusk shell design to inspire much of today's research into bio-inspired design of composite structures and their fabrication. He is the University of Houston's Thomas and Laura Sue Professor and Chair in the Department of Civil and Environmental Engineering. His lifetime of pioneering research on materials and structures used at civil, mechanical, aeronautical, electrical, biomedical, and materials engineering has garnered Dr. Ballerini ASCE's Raymond D. Mindlin Medal, among many other honors. The American Society of Civil Engineers is proud to bestow upon Roberto Ballerini a distinguished membership. Thank you, ASCE. In 1967, my parents traded their possessions for five tickets to America to pursue a better life for their three children. They arrived in New York City not able to speak a word of English, without college degrees, and no jobs. Today, their son is here to accept an honor that he never dreamed of as an undergraduate at City College of New York. Whatever I have done to deserve this beautiful medal reflects less my abilities than the talents of my students, the support and inspiration of my colleagues and the love I receive from my wife and daughter. I hope this, this great country will continue its distinctive tradition of welcoming to its shores those like my parents whose limited means were trumped by their courage and dreams. I gratefully accept this honor. Hi, I'm David Koch, a former SDI president. Who knew that at my age, I could find a new mentor and inspiration. But in the past few years, I found that person in Glenn Bell. I am constantly amazed by his level of energy and what he is able to accomplish in a short amount of time. He has his fingers in so many areas of our profession. And oh, by the way, he also loves to compete in triathlons in his spare time. I first got to know Glenn on the SEI Board of Governors and have witnessed his involvement with iStruct E, with Cross US, and of course with ASCE. My wife and I had the wonderful opportunity to travel with Glenn and his wife Judy in 2019 to Dubai for the Iconic Structures Symposium. They make a great team and are a joy to travel with. I really do not know how many hours Glenn sleeps at night, but he accomplishes more than anyone else that I know. He's the best example of the busy person being the one that you ask when you need something done and done right. He represents ASCE and our profession at the highest level, and I'm sure he will continue to inspire others in the future. With great pleasure, I introduce my friend, Glenn Bell, as a new ASCE Distinguished Member. Engineering a structurally sound edifice is the life's work of Mr. Glenn Bell, who, until recently, has been at the helm of Simpson, Gupperts & Hager, a structural engineering firm that has won awards for technical excellence and is a great workplace. He is credited with growing the company in scope, 
size and influence while executing on iconic projects globally. Apart from being responsible for landmark building structure and envelope design projects and investigating significant structural failures, he is a keen advocate for the structural engineers of tomorrow. Having contributed to the engineering curriculum at leading universities, he also put forth an approach at the 2012 SEI Structures Congress that has helped guide strategies for advancing engineers as thought leaders in planning and shaping the built environment. A thought leader in his own right, he is co-founder and director of collaborative reporting for Safer Structures US and is immediate past president of the Society's Structural Engineering Institute. Fittingly, Mr. Bell has received ASCE's Dennis Tewksbury and Forensic Engineering Awards, among others. The American Society of Civil Engineers is proud to bestow upon Glenn Bell a distinguished membership. I regularly tell people that civil engineering is one of the greatest professions on the planet. We provide a basis for society. Our colleagues are of exceptional skill, integrity, and purpose. And with the grand challenges now facing society like climate change and resiliency, our mission is more important than ever. I've endeavored to do my part by focusing on structural safety and the enhancement of our profession. It's been the most rewarding professional experience imaginable but made possible only through my mentors at Simpson, Gumberts, and Hager, innumerable colleagues from ASCE, and the tremendous support of my family, and most importantly, my wife of 48 years, Judy. ASCE is the glue that binds this great profession together, and it sets our standards for excellence. My sincerest thanks to the ASCE Board of Direction. I gratefully accept this honor. John Hooper is an exceptional technical professional in his engineering work, but I think what really truly distinguishes him as an engineer and a person is his dedication to spreading his knowledge and expertise uh, to the entire professional community and his, uh, his help in developing the careers of many young professionals. Now, John is an avid runner, and I'll tell you a story about him. Uh, he has for many years organized a jogging club at our Structures Congress, uh, our annual Structural Engineering Conference. Uh, he gets up very early in the morning and uh, invites uh, especially a lot of our younger engineers to come. And I realized that he was doing this not just to keep us physically fit, but to create a less intimidating environment for a lot of our younger engineers, many, many of them uh, attending the conference for the first time to meet, network and communicate with each other. And I've seen him personally mentor many of these younger engineers to do great things and achieve uh, uh, great things in their careers and in the Structural Engineering Institute. And in so doing, he's had a huge impact on our profession and on uh, these, these engineers' lives and, and their professional development. Many people plan for worst case scenarios. Seismic engineer John Hooper takes it to a whole new level. During a career that spans four decades, Mr. Hooper has shaped the discipline of performance-based earthquake engineering. As the director of earthquake engineering at Seattle-based Magnuson Clemensic Associates, he spearheads the firm's efforts to build on 90 years of data related to the actual versus predicted performance of buildings subjected to earthquake forces. A pioneer in the application of nonlinear analysis methods and someone who pushes the envelope in performance-based seismic high-rise designs, Mr. Hooper has numerous projects to his credit, including San Francisco's iconic Salesforce Tower, that project won ASCE's Silver Award during the Society's 2020 Opal Gala. 
Mr. Hooper, a seminal contributor as chair of the ASCE 7 Seismic Subcommittee, has helped to elevate the practice of seismic design. For his monumental contributions, Mr. Hooper has earned many awards and honors, including SEI's Walter P. Moore Jr. Award. The American Society of Civil Engineers is proud to bestow upon John Hooper a distinguished membership. Thank you, ASCE. I'm truly honored to be elected a distinguished member of ASCE. When reviewing the list of current distinguished members, I'm humbled to be included with this outstanding group of civil engineers that have made such great contributions to the profession and society as a whole. I've had the pleasure to work with and be mentored by quite a few distinguished members during my career, including two MKA colleagues, John Magnuson and Ron Klemensik, for which I'm very grateful. Working with my outstanding colleagues at MKA has allowed me the opportunity to work on fantastic projects where we are able to pursue unique solutions such as performance-based seismic design. Finally, I'd like to thank my wife, Lisa, for her unwavering support throughout my career and for my four children for their support on this journey. I gratefully accept this honor. Please welcome distinguished members Tony Bartolomeo and Jeanette Brown. My earliest recognition of civil engineering is when I was in the fourth grade and my dad told me I was going to go to Brooklyn Technical High School and become a civil engineer. Well, I took his advice and I'm very grateful that he gave it to me because I am a civil engineer and over the course of my career, I've seen the impact that civil engineering systems have on people's health, vitality, economic development. And I'm very honored to be part of the distinguished member group of ASCE, and I commend them for the great work that they do. Congratulations on your election to distinguished member of ASCE. I am sure you understand what a high honor this is. All of you have achieved such prominence in the civil engineering discipline and your accomplishments help to inspire the next generation. I know as far as I'm concerned, this has been a great honor for me and it has allowed me to convey to students and other practitioners the importance of engineering. I'd just like to congratulate Joe on this award. Um, he's very, very worthy of this honor of distinguished member. I consider him a dear friend and a colleague. Um, he's very dedicated to his family. He's very dedicated to his faith and very active in both. He's passionate about helping others and teaching, um, developing, working with students, developing technology to help wounded warriors and first responders. Um, he volunteers at George Mason University and helps raise funds so that the civil engineering students can go out and do activities like uh, concrete canoe races and engineers without borders. Um, he's mentored to numerous students. They respect him, they look up to him for advice, and um, they really seem to like him. So, since I've known Joe, he's always been involved in ethics, uh, teaching ethics. Uh, the code of ethics, uh, involved with the, doing the videos for ethics, all the ones that we've seen in classes and stuff. So I would like to congratulate Joe on this well-deserved honor, and I'm very proud of him and all his accomplishments. A recognized leader in water resources, one person also stands as well-rounded in the professional aspect of civil engineering and engineering education. Dr. Joe Manus currently serves as director of the U.S. Army Corps of Engineers Institute for Water Resources, but his 40 plus years of professional experience include a 28-year career as an Army engineer officer 
followed by an extremely productive career as a civilian civil engineer with the U.S. Army Corps of Engineers. Dr. Manus currently oversees a 271-person multidisciplinary field operating activity, supporting U.S. ACE's water-related missions as a think tank, providing analysis, developing models, and applying state-of-the-art methodologies to meet the nation's water resources challenges. Dr. Manus has been a national force in developing ethics education and outreach and the recognition and certification of civil engineers with pre- and post-licensure special skills and demonstrated mastery in their respective fields. He has been a leader in water resources, environmental security, and environmental engineering education on the faculties at West Point, U.S. Army War College, and George Mason University. The American Society of Civil Engineers is proud to bestow upon Joe Manus a distinguished membership. Good afternoon. I am most humbled and honored to be recognized by ASC, and more importantly, my colleagues as a distinguished member of the society. ASCE is a key part of my professional career by providing opportunities, insights, and perspectives that I would not have gained otherwise. I take this opportunity to thank my doctoral advisor, Professor Heinz Steppen, University of Minnesota, uh, the Brigadier General retired Jerry Galloway, a mentor and valued friend, and Professor Pascal Champagne and Ms. Sandra Knight, with whom I have frequently collaborated on a variety of ASCE efforts. Most importantly, I recognize and thank my wife, Stephanie, and four children for literally following me around the world and supporting me throughout a demanding professional and personal uh, career. Again, I thank each of you for this recognition as I gratefully accept this. Hello, I'm pleased to have the opportunity to introduce you to Professor Satish Nagaraja from the Civil and Environmental Engineering Department at Rice University. You'll hear more about his accolades and many contributions to the field, but today I'm here to introduce you to the man, the friend, the mentor, and the colleague. Satish has given very much to our profession, our university, and department and is always passionate about reminding us to combine rigor with practical impact. He's a committed family man with two grown children, also very successful Rice University graduates. And he's a committed mentor, always enthusiastic in supporting his students and helping to cultivate future leaders in our field. With these three examples, we get an eye into the many roles and hats that Professor Nagaraja carries while giving so much to our field. I'm pleased that we have the opportunity to celebrate him as a distinguished member of ASC. Some things, if described 10 years ago, would have sounded like science fiction. One example is laser-based strain sensing using nanomaterials. And another is adaptive passive stiffness. Dr. Satish Nagarajaya has been one of the top 25 most cited structural engineering researchers. A professor of civil and mechanical engineering at Rice University, he is regarded as a pioneer in the development of advanced modeling and numerical techniques for nonlinear dynamic analysis of base isolated structures and innovating truly adaptive passive stiffness systems with dampers. In converging multiple disciplines with creativity and innovation, Dr. Nagarajaya's work has been implemented in the latest computer codes in National Earthquake Hazards Reduction Program Guidelines, in Federal Emergency Management Agency, and in Applied Technology Council. Having founded and served on numerous influential technical committees, he continues to be a leading voice and has been recognized with the ASCE's Newmark Medal 
Moiseev Award, and Raymond Reese Research Award. In 2019, he was elected to the U.S. National Academy of Inventors. The American Society of Civil Engineers is proud to bestow upon Satish Nagarajaya a distinguished membership. Good afternoon. Uh, this is Satish Nagrajaya. I wish to thank ASC for this distinguished honor. I'm humbled by it. And I would like to thank a few people who helped me along the way to get to where I am, starting with my uh, graduate advisor, Professor Andre Reinhorn, and my former collaborator, Professor Gat Barry Goodno, and uh, at Rice, many colleagues, including Jamie. And uh, particularly, I would like to thank Sidney Burrus, who was a former dean who hired me and retained me at Rice, and uh, a number of other colleagues at Rice, too, many, too numerous to mention. And uh, I would also like to thank uh, uh, my family, particularly my parents, my father, who was a civil engineer himself, distinguished civil engineer himself, uh, my wife, Chaya, uh, who's been supportive all through, and my uh, children. Uh, it's a great time to be a civil engineer, structural engineer, particularly because of the advent of uh, machine learning, artificial intelligence, and we can have a big impact on civil infrastructure using these advanced tools. And I look forward to contributing to this uh, using some of these advanced tools, in addition to what continuing to contribute to ASC. I accept this honor, thank you. I first met Dr. Ramirez in 2012 when I served on the NSF review team for the George E. Brown Jr. Network for Earthquake Engineering Simulation called Knees, that Julio directed. I was immediately impressed with his energy and exemplary leadership, which was critical in leading to Knees' extensive and successful outcomes. Following the Knees program, Dr. Ramirez invited me to join him and other co-principal investigators in the NSF NERI Natural Hazards Research Infrastructure Program focused on earthquake, windstorm, and coastal hazard research. The Network Coordination Office led by Dr. Ramirez provides the leadership to connect and coordinate the many varied research programs. Professor Ramirez continuously demonstrates outstanding leadership in worldwide efforts in data collection, research, and education to enhance resilience of civil infrastructures and communities against earthquakes, tsunamis, and other natural hazards. Julio is an exceptional team leader, engineer, researcher, and educator, talented in many ways. And I heartily welcome Dr. Julio Ramirez as a 2021 Distinguished Member of ASCE. Stratton Time Modeling to a layman conjures up images of a catwalk during Fashion Week at best. It is, however, in our industry, a less celebrated yet powerful and influential means of expressing shear and torsion in concrete structures. Since his days as a graduate student at UT Austin, Dr. Julio Ramirez has advanced research on the behavior of reinforced concrete buildings and bridges against natural hazards providing a basis for introducing strut and tie models and prescribing requirements into the ACI 318 Structural Concrete Building Code. Resolving a long-standing issue concerning performance of deep beam members, his methodology has been instrumental in buttressing overall structural safety and making it part of mainstream design. His research has yielded insights into quick identification and cost-effective methods for improving earthquake performance for such structures. 
Purdue University's Carl H. Kettlehut professor, Dr. Ramirez continuously encourages young researchers through his lectures and summer programs. His dedication has garnered many teaching awards. The American Society of Civil Engineers is proud to bestow upon Julio Ramirez a distinguished membership. Thank you to ASCE for this wonderful recognition. I am honored to have been elected to the highest achievement available to civil engineers, the title of distinguished member of ASCE, and most pleased to accept it. I would like to thank my family for the support, my colleagues at Purdue University, and my professional collaborators for their generous advice and contributions during my career. I also wish to acknowledge my professors at the ITESO in Mexico and the Universities of Texas, El Paso and Austin, where I pursued my degrees for their teachings and guidance. I especially wish to recognize the support of my PhD advisor, Dr. John E. Breen, for his patience, teachings and mentoring in the launching of my academic career. It is my pleasure to introduce Lucio Silverman as one of ASCE's newest distinguished members. His nomination materials document the abundant contributions to computing and construction supporting his well-deserved election. I'd like to spend a few moments highlighting some of his other qualities. Lucio is fiercely loyal, a visionary, and committed to making a difference. By visionary, I mean he often sees a decade or more ahead of where most of us focus. The combination of his long view and loyalty makes him an ideal mentor. Add his commitment to excellence and making a difference, and you have the ultimate academic leader, one who can envision a different future and nurture the resources to make it happen. As department chair at USC, he concentrated on superb hires and vital infrastructure. Diversity was a key element in his blueprint for excellence. As a result, the department increased the percentage of women faculty threefold and hired the department's first two Latino professors. Lucio made a real difference crafting a new academic direction at USC and continues providing extraordinary intellectual leadership in our discipline. In construction, all team members have their critical parts to play. Thankfully, novel methodologies and data analytics and management that is the life's work of Dr. Lucio Soibelman ensures that the disparate systems used in construction and operations are talking to one another. He is a pioneer in the field. Leveraging his many years managing construction projects and presiding over the many systems often relying on low quality data from multiple sources and types, Dr. Soibelman explored new ways of applying machine learning, AI frameworks, and analysis algorithms to digitally empower the acquisition, modeling, management, and analysis of disparate construction and facility-oriented big data. With funding from organizations such as the National Science Foundation and others, his research output in integrating construction engineering and computer science is unparalleled, along with having served as chief editor of the ASCE Computing and Civil Engineering Journal. He has been recognized with both Construction Management and Computing and Civil Engineering Awards from ASCE, as well as other prestigious recognition. The American Society of Civil Engineers is proud to bestow upon Lucio Soibelman a distinguished membership. Uh, 
Thank you, David, and thank you, ASE. First, I would like to thank my father, a civil engineer, and my mom, that was an architect, for introducing me to civil engineering. Uh, they are wise guidance, led me to love <laughs> what I do and shape my success. During my career, I had the opportunity to collaborate with many fine and smart people and with a very large number of students. Unfortunately, I cannot name all of them here. I would like to acknowledge my wife, Tanya, married with me for 35 years. She gave me two wonderful children, Liv and Eric, who along with her have been the joy of my life. I am truly humbled, honored, and excited. Uh, I gratefully accept this honor. Thank you. It is with great pleasure that I introduce Professor Kelvin Wang. You will learn of Professor Wang's accomplishments shortly, but I want to tell you about Kelvin. I got to know Kelvin at international and national conferences, often sponsored or co-sponsored by ASCE. Kelvin, like me, attended the conferences because of the content, but also to learn something about the location. In Davos, Switzerland, we immersed ourselves in image processing algorithms and applications, but we also hiked the Alps. In Chengdu, we learned about some fascinating research by young Chinese scholars, but we also visited a giant Buddha, we walked the path of pilgrims down a mountain visiting multiple shrines, and we met the world famous pandas. Through these interactions and countless conference planning teleconferences, you learn of the breadth and depth of Kelvin's interests. You learn that you can also depend on him and enjoy working with him. I'm honored to be able to call him a friend and collaborator and introduce Professor Kelvin Wang as a soon to be member of the new class of ASC distinguished members. The roads have eyes. Likely not the summer blockbuster you're itching to see, but a fitting title to describe the novel contributions of Dr. Kelvin Wang, renowned for transforming the acquisition and analysis of data about the state of infrastructure. On the leading edge of developing 3D laser sensors, machine vision, and deep learning systems for performing airfield, highway pavement, rail, and tunnel condition surveys, for 25 years, he has successfully introduced technologies into the routine process of surveying infrastructure distresses and changed the landscape of the discipline. One of his innovations, a 30 kilohertz 3D laser imaging sensor system, acquires pavement survey data at 60 miles per hour in 3D at 0.5 millimeter resolution, is world leading with his own company, Waylink Systems Corporation, being a major supplier of the technology. He has been recognized by both the Francis C. Turner and Frank M. Masters Transportation Engineering Awards from ASCE. He was a former president of ASCE Transportation and Development Institute and became Regents Professor at Oklahoma State University in 2020. The American Society of Civil Engineers is proud to bestow upon Kelvin Wang a distinguished membership. Thank you, ASCE. Thank you, Sue. As a child, I dreamed of devising hardware to help to do things better. January 1987 was the time I arrived in the US for my PhD work at Arizona State University. My work experience at Arizona DOT paved the way for me to work on payment data collection and analysis. I'm grateful to my parents, my family, my wife, Lily, and our two sons, Jonathan and Matthew and all the teachers and mentors who encouraged me to seek and innovate. My experience as ASCE TNDI president helped me broaden my impact on the professional community. I also thank University of Arkansas 
and Oklahoma State University, which provided me platforms to develop new technologies and serve the academic and research community. I gratefully accept this honor. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome distinguished members John Magnuson and Jerry Galloway. Congratulations to all of the new distinguished members. You've been recognized for your many accomplishments. However, your honor is just as much about the future as it is about the past. This pin means that you have been permanently identified as a very capable volunteer to serve our profession. Welcome to your new responsibilities. Again, congratulations on your well-deserved recognition. 55 years ago, when I joined ASCE, I quickly learned that I was stepping into the world of the finest civil engineers in this country and around the globe, and that becoming a member of this society allowed me to associate with individuals who had positively changed the face of the world's built environment. Today, you stand to join the greatest of these in the august body of distinguished members, and the list of your contributions will be added to those who preceded you. Congratulations and well done. Thank you, John and Jerry. It is now my honor to formally induct the class of 2021 distinguished members. Induction is signified by the draping of an engraved medallion. Distinguished members, please place your medallion around your neck now. Congratulations. Please wear the lapel pin at engineering meetings and your engraved medallion when you are being photographed. Thank you all for joining us in recognizing these extraordinary individuals. I hope you enjoy the rest of the convention. <laughs>